Hello everyone. Back again with film recaps. In this video, I'm going to recap one of the thriller mystery films from 2020, titled Dangerous Lies. Before we get to the storyline, I'd like to wish everyone a happy and great day. Without further ado, let's get straight to the storyline. The movie opens up in a local diner in Chicago where business is going on as usual. A beautiful waitress named Katie approaches a sleeping customer with his order. After waking him up, she asks about his studies, to which he reveals that he's studying sociology. In the next scene, we see them having a romantic session inside his car. Turns out the man is Adam, her husband. We learn that Katie is working double shifts so that she can support Adam while he finishes his studies. He plans to get a solid job using his degree, which will secure their future. Shortly after, they return to the diner through the back door, only to witness a shocking sight, a robber has barged inside and already killed an employee. Katie freezes in horror, while Adam decides to take matters into his own hands. He grabs a frying pan, and when the intruder is distracted, he subdues the man, and in the aftermath, a news channel reports that Adam is being hailed as a hero for his quick thinking. As for the perpetrator, Raymond Gaskin, he has been charged, and is now in prison. The movie then cuts to four months later, and we see that Katie has moved on from the incident. She is currently working as a caretaker for an 88-year-old man named Leonard Wellesley. He lives in a giant mansion all alone, indicating that he is massively rich. Katie appears to take her job seriously that she has made a medicine chart for Leonard, in which she lists all of the pills he takes on a daily basis. As the two are chatting, Leonard explains the history of his garden, he says he had hired a guy named Ethan a few years ago to take care of it. However, the guy suddenly disappeared without any notice. Leonard then praises Katie for her hard work, and goes as far as calling her a friend. At their small apartment, we learn that Adam has stopped taking classes in order to find a job, but still doesn't get the job he wanted. Katie gets worried as they are very low on finances, and they still have to pay his student loans, as well as the credit card bills. Adam, as usual, says he will come up with a plan and that everything will be okay, but Katie has grown tired of his assurances. When Adam tries to console her, a plate on her hand ends up falling to the floor, shattering into pieces. This raises the tension in the room, so Katie decides to go outside to cool herself down. We are then taken to Leonard's mansion, where he abruptly wakes up to the sound of his car alarm. Assuming that someone has broken in, he grabs a bat and heads downstairs. But to his surprise, it turns out to be Katie. Leonard frantically explains that he usually hears footsteps at night but never finds anyone, so Katie reassures him that there's no one here. Leonard then asks why she has come here this late, and Katie discloses about her financial struggles. Being the kind man that he is, Leonard offers her some money, but she flat out refuses. But when he keeps on insisting, she asks him to provide her husband with a job, so that both of them can earn enough money to pay off their dues. The next morning, Katie brings her husband and introduces him to Leonard. The two men have a private conversation, and Adam is hired as the new gardener. In the meantime, the doorbell rings, and when Katie goes to check, she finds a real estate agent named Mickey Hayden outside. He claims that his client wants to buy this house, but Katie says that it's impossible, as Leonard has lived in the house his whole life and has no interest in moving, and she promises to update him. From the same day onwards, Adam starts working, and he is awestruck by the large mansion and the luxury cars that lay in the garage. A few days later, Mr. Cavern, the caretaker agency who hired Katie for this job, arrives at the mansion. He is here to check on Leonard, and the old man tells the agency that Katie is doing a great job, so Mr. Cavern concludes that everything is fine and proceeds to leave. On his way out, he notices the new gardener and asks Katie about it, but the latter doesn't reveal that Adam is her husband, and simply says that it was Leonard's idea. That evening, when Katie heads to the old man's room, he gives her a check containing her salary, and she simply thanks him before leaving. But later, when she and Adam are heading home, she learns that Leonard has added a hefty bonus on her salary. Katie realizes that the old man is trying to help her, and she refuses to accept it. She decides to call him and make him write another check, but Adam points out that the banks are going to close soon, and if they don't pay the rent today, they will probably be kicked out. 
Adam tells her that they can return the excess amount to Leonard tomorrow. As Katie heads inside the bank to cash in, Hayden appears to be watching them from his car. That night at their apartment, Katie reveals to Adam that Leonard's parents died 30 years ago, and he is the only child, and he never got married. The following morning, Katie goes to work as usual, and prepares a hearty breakfast for Leonard. But when she goes to the old man's favorite room, the attic, she nervously checks Leonard's pulse, and to her horror, he is dead. Shortly after, Adam arrives at the attic to console her. But being the nosy guy that he is, he starts roaming around the place. He then comes across a big chest, which has a lot of Leonard's memories in it. At first, it seems like there is nothing useful in it, but when he lifts the top compartment, he finds a lot of cash inside, leaving the couple in shock. The two then discuss their next move. Katie believes that it's unethical to take someone else money, but Adam explains that since Leonard had no next of kin, the money is going to be taken by the government anyway. So, it would be better if they could use it for personal expenses, and Katie tells Adam they will have to be careful, so he assures her he will be. After a while, Detective Chesler arrives at the scene for a routine checkup. She gets to know that Leonard had no family members, and that he had been on a lot of medication before his tragic demise. The detective also learns that both Katie and Adam worked at the same house, and then Katie requests that Leonard's ashes be scattered in his garden, as it was his lifelong wish. Now that her employer has passed away, Katie is left with no job to support the family. Hence, she goes to Mr. Cavern's office to request for another work placement. However, he cannot offer her any job until the investigation of Leonard's death is cleared. Katie is surprised that she is indirectly being accused of the old man's death, but Mr. Cavern says that it's standard protocol. On the other hand, Adam also receives a distressing call from the company he had recently applied to. They politely inform him that he has not been selected. Upset by the news, Adam goes to the mansion, and heads straight to the attic. He is tired of living a poor life, he starts counting the dollars one by one, right when he hears glass shatters inside the mansion. Adam hurriedly hides the money and goes downstairs to investigate. He notices shattered glass pieces on the floor. And then all of a sudden, Someone strikes him from behind and knocks him out. After some time, he is awoken by Katie, who has been relentlessly calling him for a long time. She berates him for being careless, but when he mentions that the money amounted to more than $100,000, she is astounded. The two then discuss about the intruder, but Adam says that he couldn't get a clear image of the person. In the end, they come to the conclusion that he was just a burglar. Realizing that the house isn't safe, they take all the cash, and keep it in a bank's locker. As they exit the bank, the same real estate agent from earlier, Hayden, is seen keeping an eye on them again. Some days later, Detective Chesler calls the couple to her office. She mentions that since Leonard had no family members, his cremation ceremony cannot be funded. Surprisingly, Katie offers to pay for it out of her own pocket, and Adam supports her. The scene then cuts to the ceremony, where the couple is paying their respects to Leonard. Just then, they are interrupted by a well-dressed woman, who introduces herself as Leonard's attorney, Julia Byron Kim. Julia reveals that the old man approached her just weeks ago before his death. Katie is a bit confused as she had never seen her before, but Julia explains that she was called in confidentially. She then brings out a legal document, which shockingly states that Leonard has left his entire will to Katie. This obviously surprises the damn couple, and they cannot believe that they have finally become rich. Julia offers to be Katie's personal attorney, so that she can help her move into the house. Also, Julia makes sure to tell Katie that she alone makes the decisions for the house, not Adam, and warns her that money changes people. Later on, the couple has a fancy dinner where they discuss their future plans. Adam, as usual, decides to spend the money haphazardly on cars and other luxuries, but the sensible Katie makes him understand that they have to stay grounded for the time being, so that they don't attract any unwanted attention. The following day, as the two are moving things out of their old apartment, Adam suddenly receives a call from the police station, summoning him for a statement about the diner incident that took place five months ago. But when Adam arrives at the police station, the receptionist informs him that she hadn't made the call. 
He explains that he was called in to make a statement, but Detective Chesler reveals that it's not required because the diner culprit, Raymond Gaskin, was killed in his cell some weeks ago. This means that the case has been closed, so no one from the police department made the call to Adam. Elsewhere, when Katie is alone at home, Hayden once again arrives outside. This time, he is more aggressive in his approach, and he demands that the house be sold to his client. When Katie refuses and states she owns the house now, he indirectly accuses her of forging a will to get hold of the property. Having had enough, she threatens to call the police, finally making him leave. That night, Katie wants to call Julia and tell her about the strange encounter, but Adam dissuades her, saying Hayden is just another real estate agent who is after a big commission. Katie also finds a brand new expensive watch in the bathroom, and Adam tells her it's a knockoff, but she doesn't believe him. Meanwhile, Chesler finds the situation suspicious, and after checking out the diner, she goes to meet Katie, who is at her old apartment, packing the rest of her belongings. Katie reveals that they're shifting into Leonard's mansion as he has left everything for her. This shocks the detective, and she wonders how a caretaker who only worked for four months could become so close to the owner. She then asks Katie if Adam always came to pick her up at the diner, and Katie tells him he happened to come early that night and was studying. Chesler also tells Katie the truth that no one from the police called Adam, which Adam never told her. That evening, when Adam sees Katie talking with Julia, he becomes angry and says they decided she wasn't going to talk to her, but Katie says he's the one who decided. Katie then demands to know why Adam didn't tell her about the fake phone call, to which Adam responds that he was going to tell her, and he feels that he's being followed by someone around the city. Katie then theorizes that he was sent out of the house, so that Hayden could meet her alone and intimidate her. They believe he probably knows about the money hidden inside the house. After talking to Julia, Katie tells Adam that if the police find out they did something illegal, they could lose everything. Julia says they need to put the money back, but Adam tells her he won't go back to the way things were before. On the other hand, Detective Chesler interviews Mr. Cavern at the agency, who tells her Katie kept meticulous notes on Leonard's medications. But he is shocked when Chesler shows him the much higher value check Katie deposited from Leonard the night before he died, and he also had no idea Leonard also hired Adam to work at the same house. Back to Katie, when she's looking for Adam, she ventures inside the old outhouse. But when he isn't there, she begins looking around, and moves a shelf away from the wall, right when she finds another room inside. She then notices several checks in the name of Ethan, the same gardener who mysteriously disappeared several years ago as per Leonard. Katie also notices something on the ceiling. And to her surprise. She uncovers a decaying corpse, which was clutching onto some precious diamonds. In the next scene, Katie mentions that all of Ethan's checks were never cashed, and he was probably shot and bled to death. Katie wonders why he hid in the shed when he could have come to the house, where Leonard would have helped him. In response, Adam holds the precious pearls, and guesses that the incident had to do something with these. As the two are talking, someone starts banging on the door. Mr. Cavern shows up angrily, shouting at Katie for taking advantage of an old man and tarnishing his company's name, he vows to find evidence against her. Later, while cleaning Leonard's room, Katie notices that one of his pill bottles is empty. On checking the medicine chart, she discovers that it shouldn't have been empty that night. Before she can investigate any further, Adam comes home with two brand new phones, and Katie tells him they can't keep those diamonds. Hearing this, Adam says that Ethan stole the diamonds, got shot, died alone, and no one knows. Katie wants to call Detective Chesler, but Adam says they could lose everything, so Katie says as long as they have each other, they'll be alright. However, Adam still wants the diamonds, saying he will never go back to how it was, and resolves to take care of everything. When it gets dark, he gets rid of the body, and burns the checks, which they suspect Ethan never cashed to avoid creating a paper trail after running away with the stolen diamonds. At midnight, Katie is awakened by the sound of a cocking gun. Turns out an intruder has entered the mansion, and Adam is ready to confront him with a gun. Surprisingly, it is none other than Mr. Cavern, who has come to find evidence. He gets startled and falls from the stairs and dies on the spot. When the cops arrive at the scene, 
The case is ruled an accident, but Detective Chesler is still suspicious that foul play is involved. When Katie is alone, she approaches her, claiming Adam might be behind all this. She claims that all the problems began when he was appointed as the gardener of this place. Katie still doesn't believe that her husband could do any of this, but the detective asks her to investigate carefully. The next day, a confused Katie meets up with the only person she can trust, attorney Julia. She tells her about everything that has happened as of late. The two head to the bank to retrieve her money, but Adam has already taken it. Julia then assumes that he will run away with the money and throw Katie to the cops. Upon learning that Adam also has the diamonds, the attorney warns Katie that time is running out, as Detective Chesler is already suspicious, and she may come knocking with a search warrant soon. She tells Katie to make sure Adam is still in the house. On the other hand, Ethan's dead body is found in a dumpster. In his backpack, a laundry receipt was found, which has Leonard's name on it. Elsewhere, Katie arrives home, and confronts Adam who is packing up their things and the money. He is in a hurry because he has discovered that Mickey Hayden is not a real estate agent, but an ex-con who did two years in prison for breaking inside a jewelry store. He stole $3 million worth of loose diamonds which were never recovered. To add, he had an accomplice, who has never been identified till this date, so they conclude that the accomplice is none other than Ethan. Ethan probably got shot by Hayden when arguing about the share of the diamonds. After getting wounded, Ethan fled to Leonard's house, where he bled to death and was never caught. Now, Hayden is looking for the diamonds, that's why he keeps coming to this house. Katie decides to call the police, but her husband stops her. He thinks they'll get into more trouble and lose the diamonds if they do so. He then goes to take a shower, and Katie is relieved that Adam was never going to leave her. And while she's alone, she talks to Julia. But then, Hayden approaches Katie and demands to know where the diamonds are. Seconds later, Adam also arrives with his gun, and a tense standoff ensues between the two. Hayden shoots him in the chest, and proceeds to finish him off. But Adam manages to shoot the bad guy as well, killing him. In his final breaths, Adam says something about the garden, while Katie is too consumed by grief to understand. After he passes away, Julia arrives and consoles Katie. She immediately talks about the diamonds, they need to find them before the police get there. Here Katie realizes Hayden must have read her book on Leonard's medications and killed him with an overdose. Meanwhile, Julia keeps talking about the diamonds, mentioning their $3 million value. It is at this point that Katie realizes that Julia was in on the plan all along, since she had never mentioned their worth. The evil attorney then reveals that she had been Hayden's public defender and is part of the plot. She and Hayden worked together to track down the diamonds to Leonard's, but weren't able to locate them. Hayden then messed it up when he got impatient, and ended up killing Leonard by overdosing him with his own pills. This prompted her to forge a fake will for Katie, so that she could buy some. After saying this, she holds our heroine at gunpoint, demanding to know where the diamonds are. But before she can do anything drastic, Detective Chesler arrives at the scene, and when Julia tries to shoot Chesler, the detective guns her down. Just listen. The movie then cuts to four months later, and we see that Katie is pregnant, and is currently working in her garden. Shortly after, Detective Chesler visits her, and talks about how they searched for the diamonds in the house but never found them, and Katie honestly says that she doesn't know where the diamonds are. After the detective departs, Katie turns on the water sprinklers, which accidentally unearths the diamonds that were hidden by Adam. Okay guys, thanks for watching. See you again in the next video.